You guys, Bridget and I are so thrilled that you are loving last week's episode with former Playboy Mansion butler Bryant Horowitz because he is back with us this week. He is spilling more tea and reminiscing and all the good stuff. So let's waste no more time. Let's get into it with Bryant. So uh, so based on antics like that, just having fun, joking around with the guys, um, we had heard that they were going to do a show mm-hmm. and they had said um, that they wanted us to be in it and things like that so before it was Girls Next Door it was Hef's World and they filmed the pilot for us where I explained Hef's Soup and things like that and then um, later Burns came up to me and he said um, I just want to let you know that um, the idea for this came about because of the, th- the pranks you would play on Ray and the guys at Manly Night and I thought, nobody knows. They, they know about Hef, they know about the girls, they know about the mansion and the parties. They don't know about the staff. Mm-hmm. And you guys have a lot of fun. And I said, it would be a boring job if we didn't get to have a little fun. Yeah. Obviously, we're not fraternizing, mm-hmm. we're not, you know, I'm not breaking any rules like that, but uh, you gotta have fun at the job, right? Yeah. When, when the situation allows. And so he said, I thought people would really be interested in knowing what goes on behind the scenes and that some of you guys have real personalities. And he said, you know, I just wanted to tell you that that's where the idea came from when you would play these pranks and you would be, you know, doing these things. So was he, you know, rest in peace, Kevin, but um, was he telling me that just to be nice? Was he telling me that because it's the truth? I don't know, but that's what he told me. So. Uh, it was flattering nonetheless. Yeah, for sure. I think it's probably true. I can see that inspiring the upstairs, downstairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how they shot that. They kind of did the pilot that mm-hmm. way. It was revolving right. around my birthday. Yes. But it was equally about the staff and, and preparation for that as it was with what? Do you remember the hazing scene where you got tied to a chair? Tell <laughs> us about that. Yeah, because so, I didn't even remember it. <laughs> well... <laughs> So, okay, my uh, being the shift leader there and and things like that, one of the things that I wanted to always make sure is that people who were leaving, whether they were getting another job, whether they were moving away, things like that, that they would be remembered. So we would joke around a little bit. Uh, As I told you before, Brian took over as the house manager, we had Robert. And when Robert was moving on because he got a job at a studio or something like that, um, I had the idea that we should play a prank. So I had Polly actually go up on the roof um, above the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So he went upstairs through the attic up to the roof and he had a bucket, a muck bucket of water. And when I called Robert out to the back kitchen area, dumped the water on them. Oh my gosh. Right? And so another guy, this guy, Phil, who was never around for the filming, you guys may remember Phil. He was an older Egyptian guy. Um, On his last day, I had the kitchen just put a whipped cream pie and then we put it in his face, you know, like yeah. vaudeville, harmless stuff. Um, and then when I got into UCLA for my PhD program, that's in itself a full-time job. So I said, well, I can still work here weekends and I can still cover shifts, mm-hmm. but I'm going to be, I'm not going to be able to work five days a week anymore. So I had said, you know, I'm effectively quitting my full-time position. And if you guys will still have me, I'll work part-time, on-call, work parties, whatever. Yeah. And so since I was the king of the pranks, mm-hmm. they all decided that they would um, pull one on me. So my last official day was one of those Sunday night buffets mm-hmm. in the summer at the end of uh, August. And um, two of the playmates, um, Allison Waite and Stacy Fuson, uh, they lured me over towards the pool and they said, hey, we want to tell you something. So I walked over there um, and they pulled me into the pool. So I, with my, with my butler outfit on. So I was oh in the God. pool, in the pool with my butler outfit on, completely soaked. And then I walked out of the, of the pool and uh, there was Hef and he was laughing and he's like, hey, what, what happened? And I told him, <laughs> I'm no longer going to be full time. I'm going down to part time. And so I pull little pranks on people. So the staff had the had the playmates you know in on it and they pulled me into the pool yeah and he was like well you're all wet and he said yes i am and then he uh shook my hand i still have a picture of him and i shaking my hand elaine took the picture um and he was like well you got great memories yeah i said yes sir and then so that was 
not the but so the butlers wanted to do their own thing so after i'd already changed <laughs> everybody went into the movie was this the same day this was the same oh, day God. this was the same day so i had finally changed i put on a different my backup uniform in the locker and then i went outside to talk to the valets and all of a sudden three of the butlers grabbed me put me in one of the folding chairs that the valets sit in and they wrapped around 20 times with duct tape. Oh my so God. I couldn't move. Oh Why, no. And they taped my hands down, they taped my back to the chair, they taped my legs down, oh my and God. then they proceeded to grab 12 whipped cream pie containers from that they had made in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. And the kitchen staff, and they covered me with them. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I remember and seeing this from like, remember how there was the little glass window in the front door at the mansion? I'm peeking out like, what is happening right now? <laughs> So that was my, that was the prank they pulled on me, but they said, you're the one that pulls the pranks on yeah. everybody else. We're going to double you up. Oh my gosh. So not, awesome. so this was about probably half an hour, 50, 20 to 30 minutes before the movie got out. And they then lifted me up after all the whipped cream and being tied to the chair. And they lifted me up from the archway and put me in front of the fountain. And I was <laughs> like, right, are, so you I guys, are you guys going to leave me here? And they're like, movie's out in like 15 minutes. And it was like, you're going to leave me here so that half in the guests... And they're like, yep. So who was the first person to walk out and discover The first you? person to walk out, I believe, was Stacy. Oh, my God. Uh, Stacy Burke? Stacy Burke. <laughs> Stacey Burke was oh, she would have been into it. She was like, right on. She was very into it. <laughs> she was very into it. I think she may have even licked a little whipped cream <laughs> off, of my, so off of my face. so funny. And she was laughing. And then she came to get other guests. And instead of, you know, when, when we were done, when you were done with the movie, you walk through the Great Hall into the dining room, the finger sandwiches, the desserts, the yeah. coffee. She funneled everybody out <laughs> to the um, to the to the driveway, yeah. to the fountain, and they all saw me. And Joel and Allison were cracking up, and Rich and Beth were cracking up, and everybody starts taking pictures. And Elaine was still there for some reason. Maybe it was because they told she her. Maybe yeah. maybe she was in on it too. Yeah. And so she was there taking pictures. And then the one the one thing I didn't expect was that Hef came out too. Because, of course, if someone's having fun at his house, he wants to know. Yeah. I think that um, when I dumped the water on Robert, like, years earlier, I think Hef had heard something, and he wanted to know what was going on. And he likes it if he's in on the joke. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so he came out, and he took pictures with me, and he gave me the thumbs up and <laughs> things like that. And I, afterwards, I was just laughing, and I was like, well, here we are again, sir, like, two hours later. And he's like, didn't I tell you you'd have memories that would last a lifetime? Ah. <laughs> so that was, uh, so, so the, the funniest thing about that, though, is that the Girls Next Door crew was there every weekend. Mm -hmm. They were there Saturday, they were Sunday, they were there Friday, you know, just to pick up on stuff, um, even if you didn't have, like, a themed episode at the time. This was the one day they were not there. Oh, weird. They, I thought not. it was for the pilot, and then Hef was like, we can't have that in the show. I don't want people to think there's hazing over here. So what Kevin found, when Kevin found out that this is what happened, he was like, that's amazing. We need to put that in an episode. Oh. He then asked Hef if that was cool. He said, Bryant already said it was fine. He's happy to do it again. It was all for fun. He's the prank master. And Hef, that's when Hef said, no, we don't want it to look like we're hazing people. Yeah. So it never got put in the show because it was the one day they weren't there. I, I, oh I don't know if they had actually filmed it, if he would have let them. Yeah. Probably not. But, um, yeah, but he said he didn't want it to look like we hazed people. So Yeah. That's I so promise it was all in good fun. Yeah, yeah It was pies to the face and, and yeah. water. That yeah. was pretty much it, so... So when the um, the pilot was filmed and it was going to be like the upstairs downstairs thing, mm -hmm. and then E came back and said we want it to be about the girls. Were you guys relieved? We were. Or okay. We were we were relieved. I don't know if you'd be relieved or disappointed. <laughs> like it's hard to. Well, I well, I would I would imagine Brian might have been a little disappointed, but um. Well, uh, he was still a big part of the show. Even right. Of after. course. Of course. And and so uh, I think Carlina and I definitely were. Uh, were relieved. Carlina never wanted to be in the spotlight. I couldn't care less yeah. if they filmed me or not. I was fine. Um, but it was, you know, I think there there was a little bit of relief because it's like, okay, well, they're not focusing on us, so we don't have to worry about being in a certain way or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it was a little hard to get used to at the beginning because it's like you're used to just walking through, and now you have to walk around these cameras. Mm -hmm. And I almost got hit in the head a bunch of times <laughs> yeah, by cameras. Yeah, I believe it. The back of the camera, the front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I had to duck underneath. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, um, it was an obstacle. Um, but I think overall, I would have to say that that we were 
relieved it wasn't necessarily focused on us. Would we have been upset if they had kept it Hef's world and we had a more prominent role? No. Would have been fine. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so let's talk about filming a little bit. Uh, you, it were, okay, so I have not rewatched these since we've done commentary on them, which was like one year after we filmed them. Yeah. And so I, it's been like, well, for this first season, it's been almost 18 years since yeah. I've watched them. And so I've only rewatched the first season so far because that's all we're at on this mm-hmm. podcast. And in a lot of the scenes, or a lot of the episodes, I should say, you're kind of Kendra's muse. Yes. And I'm wondering if that happened uh, by happenstance, or did they ask you to do that? or It was a little of both. I think one of the things that Kevin realized before they started filming was that Kendra and I had a good rapport. I don't want to say relationship because that word gets you in trouble. (laughs) But when Kendra first came to the mansion, she was down in the pantry a lot Mm -hmm. because she had no idea what to expect, what was going on. Well, she got in trouble for being down there, too. Yes, she did. Um, But it was only to, again, to make people feel more at home, Mm -hmm. to make them relax, to give them an overall good experience. And so we would... You know, she had anxiety about it, and we would help her out, and, and we would just talk, and mm-hmm. she would feel a lot better. And during yeah. the parties, like, she was the sports girl, mm-hmm. and we'd have those SB parties and those fight nights, and there'd be a lot of sports celebrities. And you wouldn't imagine Kendra being too shy to go up to anyone at that time, but when she was 18, 19, she sure was. I used to take her up, and I would say, hey, NBA superstar Kevin Garnett, this is Kendra. Kendra, this is Kevin Garnett. Like meet each other and um so her and i always had a good friendship and a good you know uh again i don't use the word relationship rapport we were always good together sometimes we joke around and so a lot of times maybe it could be that other butlers weren't that close with her or they didn't have the same um conversations and things like that so it came naturally. It Mm -hmm. wasn't something, you know, people say, oh, for reality shows, some of it's staged, and they tell you to say certain things. There was obviously not that. Um, But there were times where the producers would say, you know, oh, we want you over there, we want you to talk to to Kendra about this, or Kendra asked for you for this, because we were comfortable with Mm -hmm. one another. And um, after the first few episodes of watching dailies and things like that, Byrne said, you and Kendra have a natural um, chemistry Again, yeah, that's, <laughs> not in not yeah. in a sexual way yeah, or anything right. like that. But you two are really funny together. You crack jokes, and it's a really good on and off screen. It's a really good rapport. Mm-hmm. So sometimes um, it would just be her coming down and doing her thing, and we would do this off camera the same mm-hmm. same way. Um, especially once Burns was like, "Yeah, relax. You're not going to get in trouble." Yeah, because um, I'm like, I'm definitely not doing that type of thing, right? That type of like back and forth, right? And then, uh, so, and then sometimes like when she was washing her car in season one, I think it was, and she was out there like twerking and then I walked by and I was like, Hey, you want to do my car next? And then she brushed me off, you know, things like that. That was just, sometimes they would say, Hey, go interact with her. But a lot of the times it was just natural. Well, that was actually one of the things on my list because, um, there's a couple of scenes that I just thought of off the top of my head, a whipped cream scene where Mm -hmm. she's like squirting you with whipped cream but you don't seem amused by this right i mean (laughs) i feel like you look kind of like annoyed by this uh i was i was annoyed because she got some on my uniform yeah well on Um, purpose yes and it was a little more than our normal like back and forth like we're very buddy buddy jokey jokey and that one, I was a little annoyed because I'm like, now I gotta go change my uniform. Right. And I was like, you you went a little farther than you normally go. And I think that was still at the time, at the beginning, when we're like, how do we react? So I think part of that was me being a little frozen, like, she's gonna do what she wants, mm-hmm. and I have to stand there and take it. Right. I'm not gonna yell at her, and I'll you know I'll I'll go along with it. But like, is Hef gonna be mad? Like. If I just stand there, he can't yell at me for things. Like, and that, so that was around that time where they were like, you could, or Kevin's like, you can relax. Yeah. You guys can be who you are. They want to see that. And we're like, okay, well, when they moved it to <laughs> you girls, we're like, we don't want to steal scenes. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to have to get mad. We don't want, 
you know, things like that. Yeah. So we had to figure out how we fit in and how much we could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. But with the whipped cream, yeah, I was a little annoyed. Yeah. Well, then there's another scene that's um, a whole other episode, but she does the same thing with paint. Yep. But it's dry, but I'm sure you probably don't realize it at the moment that she's doing it. But it's yeah. sort of like, uh, thanks a lot. Like, you know. But the one I really wanted to ask you about, it, and you already brought it up, is the car wash scene. Mm -hmm. Because do you remember that day? Yes. And she washed the car in a Confederate flag shirt. And do you remember the drama associated with that? I remember that that it was controversial. I don't remember. I don't. I don't know if I was around for all of the drama because I know that they asked me to come out and I make a comment and things like that. But I don't think I was there for most of the aftermath. Aftermath. Yeah. Because I don't think I was there during the car wash thing because I don't recall her doing that at all. But mm. I remember coming home and there was like buzz in the pantry area. And it's like, what? You didn't hear? And I'm like, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Kendra was wearing a Confederate flag shirt washing the car. And there were some staff that were not yeah. happy about this situation. So I was told that they sent somebody out to say something to her about it. And I thought maybe that scene where you go out there was that scene. Yeah, no, that wasn't. It wasn't. No, that wasn't. I didn't I didn't go to tell her how to dress or not dress or anything like that. Well, but, not to tell her how to dress <laughs> or, or not just, how to dress, but just tell her that it was of offensive to yeah. some people. No, that wasn't me. I mean, that's not why I was out there. I'm I curious think they, who told her later. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so then uh, after season one, mm -hmm. do you want to, do you know what I'm about to say? No. About the no more scenes? Oh, yeah. So we met up with a producer who wants to remain anonymous, who was mm -hmm. kind of giving us some um, behind the scenes. This person worked um, like in the edits. So oh, okay. they right. came to the mansion a few times. So I probably would have never seen No, huh? Yeah. They said after season one, Hef like wanted to not do the pantry scenes anymore. Because I, I think he had kind of an insecurity. Not mm -hmm. that, not that he thought anybody had anything going on with Kendra or you had anything going no, on. No, no. But I think it's just like an insecurity that goes way back to like other people and what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's when we're talking about that fine line, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, we we were also we we just knew that they were cutting some of those down, but. Um, you know, you act like when when we heard that Girls Next Door was going to be instead of Hef's World, we were like, wow, I can't believe he's giving you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were, and, and again, we were like, well, how much or little can we do? And so it totally makes sense that he's like, well, if these butlers are stealing the show yeah. and getting more notoriety, like I was not trying to do that. Yeah, I was just sure. doing what I was asked to do. Mm -hmm. And if they said it was too much, I would tone down because I still was going to school and yeah. I still was working <laughs> there and I needed the money. Um, I needed to, to keep making car payments and pay rent. Uh, so, you know, it was not a surprise to us that they did less of those scenes um, at yeah. that time anyway. You know what's so interesting to me is how you say that you guys were really surprised that Hef would let his girlfriends be the stars of a show and it have a chance to be even more, or as famous as he is or more famous than he is and I but I don't think he ever thought that he was doing that right I think he thought this show was about him and the three girls that live there but it could be anybody because we were told right. that all the time that we were replaceable and it just another been, blonde yeah that it could have been anybody it didn't matter that it we we in his mind we weren't famous it was him still that made it. And even if we were famous, it's because of him. It wasn't because mm -hmm. people liked us on our own. And that makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. right? But if a butler has their name on the screen, like that's how I realized he knew my name. I was the only butler, as far as I know, that he called by my first name, which was a little intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also knew that, that he would watch a lot of dailies and my name would be yeah, there. Yeah, right. Because normally he buzzed down. Bzz, it's Hefner. He wouldn't ask for anybody's name yeah. unless you were in trouble and somebody told him to ask for somebody's name. Yeah. Because that happened a couple times, but... <laughs> well, then the show airs. Did you watch the show? I did. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd always have the screenings in the screening room, but you guys weren't in there. No, we weren't in there for that. Um, and right after the show started airing... Well, first, I should say that before the show even started airing, the mansion would get a lot of prank calls. Oh, yeah. 
all the time, way before you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and way after. <laughs> what, what were those prank calls like? Uh, a lot of times people were, uh, you know, because we'd have to answer the phone, Playboy or Playboy Mansion, can I help you? Because mm-hmm. we were the switchboard. Um, the number was listed publicly. I know. For years. And, uh, you know, and way before we had Color ID and Star 69 and things like that. So Was it listed I, under, do you know if it was listed under Hefner Hugh or the Playboy Mansion? Like I, in a phone I think it was Playboy Mansion. I think it was Playboy Mansion, Funny. yeah. Because I feel sure. like I've looked it up before. Oh my gosh. Way back in the day when you had to do those things. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we would get a lot of hang-ups. We uh-huh. would get a lot of, you know, just people being ridiculous and asking for Hef or asking for girls and... You know, people that just like couldn't believe we th- that the number was actually real. Um, and then sometimes there would be people who would call that were uh, drunk, and mm-hmm. just there was this one, <laughs> there was this one woman who lived in Chicago. Her name was Diane. Uh, yes. Do you remember Diane? Yeah, she's the one who said she we, was Hef's daughter. Because do you remember that we used to uh, when you would tell ask us when Diane called and we would invite you in so you yes, could listen to I our heard antics. her. So one of the things um, that was really fun for us is once we got caller ID, we could see some of the same repeat numbers. Uh-huh. So we knew if Diane or somebody like that oh was calling. There was also this Lisa Hewen who had done a photo shoot for the magazine like way back in the day and was always asking for money from Hef. Oh no. Some Canadian woman oh, and man. things like that. And she was really down on her luck and was oh, like no. trying. But Diane, Diane was uh, not really sure exactly what was going on with Diane, except she was always, uh, I guess I described it as three sheets to the wind. <laughs> yeah. And she would call up and she would be delusional. And she would, um, she honestly believed that she was Hef's daughter. Oh my gosh. And that she was our boss and that she ran the mansion. Oh! <gasps> so sometimes we would just have conversations with her for like 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, and other times, sometimes uh, people would prank call us all the time. So what we, we were able to do once we had like call linking, like three-way calling, <laughs> sometimes, and you were around for this too, and you were sometimes, we would uh, have somebody prank call and we'd put them on hold and then somebody else would prank call and we'd take the number down. <laughs> And then we would link the two numbers together and have them pranking each other, and we would be on mute just listening. (laughs) So funny. And that made our job so much fun because, you know, a lot of times, like, we had to work to set up, we had to do the buffet, and then there would be days where, you know, when when you're in the movie, we've cleaned everything up, and we're just waiting for the movie to end. So we'd have an hour to just sit and do nothing, you know? And so these prank calls, a lot of people got annoyed by the prank calls. We just, we made it fun. Carlina yeah. and I especially That's so made it funny. fun by having them crank call each other. Or sometimes we would, uh, sometimes we'd call a butler who was off and we would three way, uh, oh my a God. prank call like Diane with my friend Evan, oh who no. then you know, la- later, who later worked in video with, with Kalata. Yeah. So I would, and Evan was my roommate for a year too. So sometimes when Diane was off, he loved messing with Diane. So sometimes just if we were bored. We would we would like three way call Evan with Diane and oh just let God. him just let him talk and he'd be like you guys. <laughs> Evan commented on one of my reels which had us talking on the podcast. He goes justice for Archie and I go what does that mean? <laughs> he never answered. I think it's because we talk about Archie's farts. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> they <laughs> were they would legendary. clear a room. Legendary. Clear a yeah. room. Um. <laughs> Uh, but then after the show started airing, and I have a photo of it, there was a the whiteboard in the pantry, and it said prank calls, and it said Holly, Bridget, Kendra, and, oh, each of our so, names, and you guys would tally how many phone calls we each got. So one one of the things that we um, did to keep things interesting, because again, like you know, again, weekends was always busy and things like that, but during the week we would have sometimes hours when nothing would happen. So we would do like thoughts of the day, and we'd do like little little things. So we. Sometimes that's what we would do like to we had our whiteboard that they put in there And so we would come up with some theme or idea We would ask people like what's your favorite blah 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 and then we put the the winners And so uh, one of those things was how many prank calls for which girls and which girl got the most prank calls And so we would do that and we would tally every time someone asked for Holly someone asked for Bridget Someone asked for Kendra we would tally it down And these are some of the things we would do just to keep it fun and interesting. Yeah, 
Um, somebody was telling us too about lottery tickets you guys had in there, and every once in a while, Hef would see it and, and want to pitch it on yep. the lottery too. <laughs> yeah, it was mostly the the maintenance guys that started it, and they would when when the the jackpot would get really big, you know, um, they would have one person go down and they would collect money. They would collect from the butlers, from security, from you know, not yeah. the guests, but they would collect from the employees. Mm-hmm. And they were like, if we're going to win, you know, we're going to share. Yeah. Because we were really a family. And I I didn't do it as many times as some of the others because I'm like, I'm not as big on the lottery as, yeah. as some of the others. Um, but it was it was a big thing. And they would all, like, gather around when the numbers were being read. Oh and so, gosh. yeah, when, yeah. when I have heard about it, he's like, I'd chip in. Yeah. <laughs> and they, you know, the first time they were like, really? Like, mm-hmm. you already have a lot of money. But... Again, he wanted to be part of the stuff that went on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when you were watching the show, did you feel like it was an accurate representation of what was happening at the mansion? I felt I felt like it was. Um, I think the reason the reason that I watched the show is I'm I was like I'm curious what how they cut my scenes together and things <laughs> yeah. like that. Like what did what did they put in? What did they not put in? And of course, because I had friends that are like, "You're on TV. We're going to watch this." And yeah. I was like, so I couldn't really mm-hmm. escape it. Yeah. Um, wasn't it wasn't a big deal to me i was just like oh was this accurate was this not accurate and you know i mean i wasn't in it enough like minutes wise that it was that they would like patch things together but Mm -hmm. yeah i thought it was pretty pretty accurate representation of what was going on yeah um was it hard to watch yourself no i know a lot of people say that it's hard to watch yourself i think um I didn't, I don't really have a problem with that. Like, I wasn't excited to watch myself, <laughs> but I wasn't, like, cringing about it. So I think, I guess, kind of indifferent. Yeah. It was just kind of like, okay, oh, well, they didn't use the whole scene there. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that was pretty much it. I know I always freak out to watch myself, mm-hmm. and I hate hearing my voice afterwards. I'm like, yeah, no, that's so not different. how I sound. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's prob- that was probably the, uh, you know, kind of nasally. So I'm like, mm-hmm. eh. <laughs> but but that that would be the only real problem I had with it. Yeah, we touched on this earlier when you were talking about how we did the table read for the movie. Mm-hmm. But did you guys like when there were special events kind of at the mansion, like my murder mystery parties or our pumpkin yeah. carving parties or like yes. the table read? Your, or... your your murder mystery party was uh, we we had a lot of fun with those. And in fact, like I said, um, because I was only working part time, there would be some times where they'd call me and they'd be like, Bridget wants you for this or. You know, Kendra wants you for this, or, you know, Hollywood like this, it, could you come by? Uh-huh. And, you know, I wasn't getting paid for it, because we didn't get paid for the show. We just signed our agreement. Oh, the show would call you, not the mansion. The show would call me. Sometimes Brian would say, hey, you know, Bridget wants this. Like, for the reading, I think Brian called me, and he was like, uh, I know you're at UCLA down the street. Do you think you'd come in for this? And I was like, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Of course I'd do it. Yeah. You know, so... And pe- some people would be like, well, you're not even, you're not on the clock. You're not yeah. getting paid that day. I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. You know? Um, so, no, we, we totally got into the, some of that stuff. The murder mystery was so much fun where we put on tuxedos. Yeah. We had the gloves. Yeah, the um, butler we, ballet. <laughs> we took pictures with Hef because he loved that we were in um, tuxedos. Yeah. And I think my favorite, obviously my favorite thing from that episode was convincing Kendra that Archie was the murderer. Yes. I know. So funny. We talked about that. That was, not, that was not asked of me. That was completely <laughs> organic. I, I didn't realize she was going to run with it and tell everybody else. Like, we were just totally messing with her. Mary's like, Archie? The, the dog? dog? <laughs> so confused. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> so I actually had a question for you, and it's funny because it led to one of the story. It actually leads to one of the stories you kind of said on the t- when we were texting. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering what happened with the butlers when we were traveling. Like, what, what would you guys do? And then there's a T-shirt story. Yes, yes, so yeah. Us. I gave you this story yesterday, um, just as a reminder for myself. Um, so when Hef was out of town, like when the girls all went to Europe or when you guys went to New York and Chicago, because Hef didn't leave very often, mm-hmm. but when he did, it was deep clean time, you know, it's spring cleaning. So we would clean out all the pantry, we would clean out the fridge, we'd clean out the drawers, the sodas, r- rotate. Um, and so since we were doing all the cleaning, we obviously weren't wearing our butler uniforms. So we were just able to wear whatever we wanted. We didn't care if it got dirty. We were just taking care of the dogs and cleaning. And so um, Gabe, the chef, and I went in uh, probably a f- few months before Girls Next Door started filming. We went on a trip to Chicago, and I have a friend that works in a restaurant in Lyle, which is about 40 minutes outside of downtown Chicago. 
And when Gabe and I came, he was like, hey, stay with me, come see my restaurant. And um, it was a restaurant called The Country House. And so we went in and he gave us food and he's like, hey, you guys want a t-shirt from The Country House? And we're like, free t-shirt? I'm in college, working at the mansion for not much money? Sure. Yeah. And so um, he gave us those shirts. And then one of the days, I think you were probably in New York at the time, but they did a New York and a Chicago. So, I mean, you may have been in Chicago, but it was just one of the days you weren't there. And I was just taking care of the dogs and cleaning. And I was wearing the country house shirt because I didn't care if it got dirty. Mm -hmm. Free shirt, great. Yeah. Um, And so I was cleaning and then I realized it was time to feed all the dogs. And uh, that's when the show was there and they were like, oh, this is what you guys do when, when nobody's here. And they said, oh, are you gonna, are you gonna feed the dogs now? And that's when there was like seven or eight dogs mm-hmm. there. So I said, yeah, I have to you know, ration out all the food and then take them all out in the front lawn and let them run around. And they're like, can we, can we film you doing that? And I said, sure. So and they're like, can you explain it to us what you're doing? I'm like, sure. So I was wearing the country house shirt and when they cut that together in the episode, it happened to be the one that you guys were in Chicago. And so when um, that episode aired, somebody who knew the owner of the restaurant was like, hey, I was watching that Girls Next Door episode and some butler was um, feeding dogs and he was wearing a country house shirt. He was wearing your restaurant's shirt. And the owner said, how in the world did (coughs) this butler at the Playboy Mansion get one of our country house shirts? And my friend Rupendra, he said, oh, he's a friend of mine and when he came to visit, I gave him the shirt. So he's like, we just got free advertising because it happened to be the episode where the girls were in Chicago with Hef. And so all of a sudden, one day in the mail, I get a check for $50. And I'm like, I got a $50 check, what is this? So I called my friend and he was like, yeah, my boss, the owner, he told me um, to get your your address and to send uh, a $50 check for advertising since it just happened to work out that way. That's sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> were there things still going on at the mansion when we were gone? Like, were girls still staying in the guest house to test? Or Yes. Yeah, sometimes there would be girls that were still staying there. So we would still, you know, give them food. They'd come and get it and, or eat in the dining room. But a lot of uh, the times they would be in the med room because we'd use the dining room to, like, pull out the drawers and clean everything and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So there were still um, girls there from time to time. But yeah. it was still just really easy because they were cleaning a lot of the kitchen stuff too so it, it was a very limited menu yeah I bet yeah so what would you say is one of the wildest things you ever saw at the mansion one of the wildest things <laughs> that I'm allowed to say Uh-oh. Um, well one, one of my favorite stories I guess this wouldn't be wild but um, I'll, I'll give you this one this one was just kind of like doesn't normally happen um, Pam Anderson calls it like 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday and I was about to get off work at like 12.30. I worked 4 to 12.30 p.m., 4 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. She calls up and she's like, hey, can I talk to Hef? And I'm like, wow, it's really late. It's 11 o'clock. Is it a prank call? Uh, no, it was really Pam. Like we, I, I knew Pam from like um, Easter when she'd bring the kids and stuff uh-huh. like that. So I was like, okay. She's like, I happen to have um, the photographer David LaChapelle with me and he's never been to the mansion. And we were just talking about it in the car and I wanted to ask Hef if I could give him a tour. Nobody comes at 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday to give a tour. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I hope that he doesn't get disturbed that I'm waking him Mm -hmm. up at 11. So I buzz him and he happened to wake up or he, or be awake. And he's like, yes. And I said, I'm so sorry to bother you, sir. Um, Pam Anderson is on the phone. She wanted to talk to you. I promise it's her. It's not a fake. Um, she has David LaChapelle, the famous photographer. She wants to give him a tour. Oh, well if it's Pam, yeah. (laughs) So I said, okay. And then, um, Security, and then he called security. Security is like Tony, I think it was in security. And he said, okay, um, they're coming up. So if they need anything, go ahead and give them. So Pam came in with David LaChapelle and it was just me and this guy, Darren. And uh, we were like, okay, you guys need anything? And they're like, no, we're just gonna show them around. I said, okay, you know, just don't go upstairs and have fun. And then about 45 minutes later, uh, they came into the pantry and Pam's like, I've met you before, right? And I said, yeah, you know, I've served you and the kids at Easter and things like that. And she's like, well, then we're friends, right? And I said, sure. And she said, well, friends drink together, right? And then again, this is, oh, again, okay. when I don't normally drink on the job, especially 45 minutes before my shift ends. 
But she's like, well, if we're friends, friends drink. And nobody was awake, so we were like, sure. So <laughs> Darren and myself and David LaChapelle and, uh, and, uh, and Pam, I poured them shots of Patron, and we just took shots and <laughs> cheered, and that was one of the, the weirdest things. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, I, I mean, I know that there's there's been weird things. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've seen lots of things happening in the grotto because I've even seen, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, the grotto is probably the weirdest thing. Um, <laughs> Knowing what you know that happens in the grotto, would you go in the grotto? No. <laughs> no, no. I've cleaned up too much in there. Um, a lot of water. So Bro, yeah, I think. Do you know when I used to give tours at the mansion, people would want. They would empty out their bottle of water and yeah. put grotto water. Oh, I've, in. I've, yeah, I've, I've been given. I've given tours when that's happened too. Yeah. I'm like, you don't want that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have to say. Well, I, I, I've seen, I've seen Snoop Dogg fall down the, the back stairs to the to the laundry room because he was too faded. Oh no! Which is uh, and, he was and he, going down to the basement. He well, he wasn't trying to. He was he was <laughs> hanging for some reason during a party. He was hanging. Back in the back area where our soda fountain was, in the back kitchen oh, the area, back kitchen. That was and like then kitchen. there's those those stone steps down to the laundry room, Ouch. and he was hanging out just at the top of the stairs, and he lost his balance and fell. <gasps> but he was so oh, no. he was so faded that he popped right back up, and he's like, "I'm fine." <laughs> oh my god! And I was god. like, the, "The day that Snoop Dogg can't handle his shit, that's a weird day." Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. The comedy of that scene reminds me of like. Do you remember? I think it was Fourth of July, but it was when we were sitting at the table, like eating. It was like dinner time, and Crispin Glover was like standing up against yes. the house. And this was when he was yes. starring in some movie where he played like a rat person. Yeah, Willard. 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 So he's standing there, and there were just so you guys know, like the landscaping at the mansion was always organic. So there were. I don't want to make this sound gross because people are going to picture rats, but there would be rats like in the ivy. Would, yeah, you wouldn't see rats running around, but it's like it, they were there. Yeah. So he was like backed up against the house and a bunch of rats. Well, I thought it was just one rat <laughs> ran out and ran right for his and foot. He, and he just freaked out. He, went, ah! he freaked. But it was so funny, just the visual of it and just the fact that he just got done starring in a movie called Willard about this rat the guy. Rats, yeah. Oh my God. It was so funny. Oh my God. That, that, is, was, that was a good mansion movie. That is strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of incidents involving Vern Troyer. <gasps> many, many. Oh, yeah. Like sexual? Mm hmm Like, some of the girls were really intrigued by him, and so um, there would be times where I would be serving a drink or something, and I'd turn right back around because I did not need to be part of that. Yeah. Uh, there, I had heard that... Um, one time he brought a girl up that was asking people to like pee in her mouth or something oh, like that. Oh man! Okay, weird, weirdest thing. Here, here's a really uh, interesting one. I, I, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. So, one of those first parties before the girlfriends, um, there was a at this point in time because it was still the late '90s. So, relatively unknown actress Angelina Jolie. This was like after her was it Gia that she did. I can't remember the name of the movie specifically, but it was like before she hit it big, mm -hmm. before Brad Pitt and mm -hmm. things like that. And I was in the um, I was in the bathhouse area cleaning out because one of the things we had to do, uh, which was so much fun, was clean out the trash cans, the barrels, um. and, and just replace the bags and things like that. So yeah. all I was doing at that point, it was after midnight, all I was doing is um, replacing bags. And um, there was a girl in the bathhouse that had a bunch of other people, and there was like the middle bathhouse. And she, I, I knocked on the door to ask if they needed me to, to empty the trash can. And this girl, who I didn't recognize at the time, was like, no, but I need you to spank me. Oh and my God, like, that's so funny. And again, this was my first couple years there. Yeah. So I was still not, I wasn't, well, I'm, I'm, I would never be comfortable doing that <laughs> yeah. to anybody, but, like, I, I turned it down, that um, but so that was funny. probably the weirdest. Yeah! Was, you know, yeah. And, it, and if it wasn't me, if somebody, whoever the next person was, it's not because it was me, it was just because I happened to be there. Yeah. So you know, funny. but that was probably the weirdest. Were there any really weird girlfriend requests? Weird girlfriend requests. Um, 
I mean, I, I'd probably say that, you know, we've had them chaperone us, we've had them go out, you know, um, and, and get things outside of the mansion. Uh, I probably would say, because considering our, you know, our mansion staff, especially the, the chefs, were really good. We Sometimes we'd have, you know, five-star luncheons mm -hmm. for Rosenzweig and things like that. Yeah. We had really high-quality food a lot of time during the parties and mm -hmm. things like that. And I remember working in graveyards or half graveyards before you guys, and we would get asked, and this, to me, I thought this was the, the weirdest, grossest thing. We would get asked to go to 7-Eleven and just buy the entire stock of 7-Eleven sushi, which is just the cheap, crappy, like, I don't think I would trust 7-Eleven sushi. I didn't even know they had sushi. Oh my it's just God. the, the, the pre-packaged crap. Oh, wow. And like one, two in the morning, we'd get a call from one of the girls. Can you go and buy sushi? And you know what? Whatever's there, just buy it. And that, to, to me, that stands out as the weirdest. Jeez. That is unusual. Yeah. Well, speaking of going off property, I always used to call it campus. Like I used to call them the the because you guys used to log mm -hmm. in who was on the yes. property and who was off the property. Yeah, that was security. But yes, we always had a. Log. But they call you too, right? Yes. In the yes. And you put oh, it in right. The book. We put it in the book. Yes. And I would um, I would call down and be like, "Is Holly on campus?" Yes. <laughs> I always use the word campus. And we'd have, yeah, we'd have to have record of that. Mm -hmm. But speaking of going, oh, did you guys ever tell on people like if we were past curfew or something? Like, were you like, or was it only if? They were asked. Only if we were asked. We we would never volunteer. Again, we stayed away from that, right? So we had the logbook, we had the record, and security would have it backed up, so they could corroborate a story. Yeah. Right. If we we're so we we would never narc on people. No. But if Hef called down and said it's nine oh two, is Bridget on the property? You would be like, well, no, sir. I have her logged off since three <laughs> thirty. We had we had to write down. Yeah, you're right. We had to write down the exact time, not seconds, but we had to write the the time. Like if you if you left the property and security called us at three thirty eight p.m., it would say Bridget off at three thirty eight p.m. Yeah, and then you initial it so they knew who wrote it too. Yeah. So like we had to keep the logs. Yeah. So nobody came with us during the day, but we were definitely tracked when we were yeah. on and off <laughs> campus. <laughs> but um, but what I was going to say is uh, we were talking yesterday, too, about, like, craziest requests, and you mm -hmm. were sent off campus I was. for something. Tell that story. <laughs> so it was uh, 4th of July, yeah. it was a, uh, which was always fireworks, and it was a pool party. Yes. And one of the first guests to arrive that day uh, was one Donald J. Trump. <laughs> uh, with a captain hat that looked like Hef's captain hat. Oh my gosh, that's So funny. they were like twinsies <laughs> for a little bit there. Um, and he showed up in a full suit, basically, and it was getting warm. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't know if he had ever planned on going in the pool or not, but he did not have any equipment. He didn't have a swimsuit or anything like that. And because the party had already started, all security guards that might go off campus for anything now, now, yeah. I'm, now you got yeah. me saying campus off property. off property for these things. They asked me if I could go get him, take some petty cash, and go get Trump a swimsuit. And I was not about to spend a lot of time. Um, I was not necessarily a fan of Trump then. <laughs> um, and so, it's like, where do you go though? Right. Where are and, you supposed and, to get this? And it's Fourth of July, it's 4th of so July. there's not many places open. So what did I do? I went to the closest place I could find that was open, which was Ross Dress for Less, <laughs> right outside of the Westwood Village, and I bought the cheapest suit that I could find. I don't even know if it was $10. Oh my gosh, um, and did he wear it? And I believe he did wear it. <laughs> oh I don't gosh, know if he actually, funny. I know he wore it, but I don't know if he actually went into the water. Wow. I don't, I don't believe he ever went in the water, but he did wear the suit. Was it just the bottoms? It was just the bottoms. Oh my god! Wait, what? Is there a top to it? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why, but I'm going to picture him in bathing suit. I picture like one of those 1920s, like <laughs> one <of those. laughs> That's why I was like, how is there a top to this? But I don't remember him walking around like with his stomach out. No, I I think he had a shirt on. Oh, okay. That might have been because there there was you know there was other bathing suits and other mm -hmm. clothes that we had from like people that had left them there and things mm -hmm. like that. Mostly women's swimsuits. Yeah, there was like a bag of 70s bikinis yeah. in the bathhouse. And there were a few, there were a few, you know, male swimsuits. Mm -hmm. um, there was probably an oversized shirt. I only bought the trunks. Yeah. And I know that, that he was not, you know, shirtless. 
Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. But but he did put on the trunks, and he probably would have been appalled to know that they were less than ten dollars. Yeah. Cheapest cheapest material known to man. He would want you to go to that place in uh, Beverly Hills. Was it sort of the V? You know what? um, Vilberquin. Yeah, I can never say it right. Okay, so we talked about what your favorite party was. Was there a least favorite party when you guys were like, oh, Fourth of July is coming up or something? No, Fourth of July was Fourth of July was always fun. Yeah, um, there, I'm just making that up as a couple, an example. A couple, well, there were. I was going to say we had the giant slip and slide, which was featured oh, in the show. Oh, my favorite. And uh, we had. There were a couple of years where like I didn't go, but I would be lifeguarding. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the uh, people did lifeguarding. Well, we were just there to make sure that nobody like got hurt. And on like, the slip and slide or in the pool? On the slip and slide. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not, not. I mean, we had lifeguards for the pool that were actual lifeguards, like that were certified. There were. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. They were during the parties. In. They yeah, were they blended in. in yes. They weren't like sitting on a chair but, in a red no, suit. No, <laughs> but they would have us. I mean, we'd be wearing like white polo shirts and khaki shorts for the Fourth of July party, and we just we were there sometimes and sometimes um, to get faster on the slip and slide, we would have to apply oil, yeah, baby they, oil, yeah, to the girls uh, and things like that. But yeah, a couple times uh, the the staff at the end of the night when everybody was gone, we would go down the slip and slide. They're and, the best. Um, yeah. the really dangerous ones were the first ones we had when it was just those little slip and slides nailed into the ground and it Jimmy wasn't. Rigged. Yeah. Yeah, would, those were the dangerous ones. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Hank had to figure out how to like stop get around that, and ends. then he put the big tarp up so that people could just like fall into it at the end. Well, you don't really fall into it. You you, you slide up and, and, and then slide down. up, and yep. yeah, it was. But it was still better than the stakes. It was still yeah. fun. Yes, it was of course. So fun. Um, <laughs> I would I would probably have to say that my least favorite party was um, probably New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. Um, that had a downer vibe. To that one, did. there was only what? That was less than half of what a normal party was. Mm-hmm. Everybody was really dressed up. Um, a lot of people had other places to go, and so they wouldn't even stay. So yeah. when it came midnight, you have, you know, the crew that's there and some other people that had that didn't want to be anywhere else. But a lot of people had somewhere else to be, and it was just, it wasn't as fun. It wasn't as glamorous. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, there were... We weren't making money off cigarettes or right. anything yeah. like that. The bartenders weren't making that much tips. And yeah. so it was kind of like, we could, you know, we could do our own thing on New Year's Eve. We don't have to be here. But again, I, I was I was fine with it. But yeah, it was probably the least entertaining, the least fun to be there because yeah. it was just kind of, here it is. Yeah. What about some of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think you were going to ask the same thing I was going to ask. The rental party? Yeah, did you ever have to work Candyland? Uh-huh. How was that? <laughs> oh, I worked Candyland. Yeah, I worked I worked all the Candylands um, <gasps> when I was there. Um, Candyland was interesting because, again, you don't have the, you don't have the same caliber of guests. <laughs> like, when people were guests, you know, if you were on the list, you got to go to the parties unless somehow you messed up or mm-hmm. something like that. But there was always a sense of decorum. There was always like, you know, don't walk up to half unless he asks. And, you know, there was a certain behavior that you knew to to um, stay within the rules. But yeah. in Candyland, all these randos would come up and it was just, it was just kind of chaos everywhere. Uh-huh. And so it was just like you, you, you felt dirty afterwards. <laughs> you felt, you just felt kind of slimy afterwards. Oh, no. Um, you know, it was, you know, all those people that thought about, you know, wanting to have sex in public at the mansion. Mm-hmm. Like they don't do that at the parties. Yeah. Not, not, not really. Or if you do, you go someplace discreet, yeah. not a candy land. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my so God. it can just, it's just chaos. And, you know, um, you know, there there were some drugs around, more mm-hmm. much more than any sort of party or anything like that. But like, um, it was just yeah, you just felt kind of dirty. You know, the the girls did the go go dancers in the cages and things like that, and people just staring up, and you're oh, just like, yeah. and lots of throw so, up, lots lots of throw up. Oh my but god, that's what we always yeah. heard that the vomiting was like it, notorious. Yeah, the smells the oh. smells of Candyland were. Horrible. Oh my god. The smells of candles. <laughs> the smell was probably the worst part. Oh no. And they would pack it. So like, oh, you god. know, we had, you know, we had like the, the video guys that made sure it wasn't too loud for the neighbors and there was like a a limit of like, you know, sometimes a thousand twelve hundred, I think like I said, like that Midsummer's ninety nine when the A listers were there, I think we had as many as like maybe twelve hundred. And it was packed. Candyland would fit would, would shove in fifteen hundred. And so, like, wow. 
not only was it gross and smelly, but you could not have your own path just to pick up cups and plates. Oh, wow. Like, you had, you're had you bumping into people, and, like, it's not, 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 it wasn't so much fun. Ick. Oh, man. Ick. Yeah. Ick. Mm-hmm. Um, were there some difficult people to deal with that everyone hated to deal with? Like, oh, this guy, or this person, or whatever. Are you talking, like, guests, celebrities? Like anybody. Just, anybody I mean, that stands out. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, residents? Re- residents. Oh, residents. I mean, they're, they're, yes, they're, they were definitely difficult people to deal with. Um, there were times when, like, people would be with Hef and they would act different than when they were with, by themselves. Oh, oh I sure. thought that was and rampant. It was, well, it wasn't so bad for me because like again I knew the dynamic wherever they were but a lot of times like when we talk about like food orders and things like that and poor Ramon oh. because you we before we had the computerized system we used to write the tickets ourselves yeah and for our own purposes they had that where you're supposed to serve it most of the time we know you you live in this room you live in that room and so like if you know if Bridget's name's on it it's going to be in Bridget's room Unless it's, you know, unless you're down in the, in the um, dining room or something like that. But, like, so we would try to let them know, like, master. We would put a big X where it said master bedroom. And then, you know, when they were in their own bedrooms. But the kitchen staff doesn't read that. That's more for our reference of where mm-hmm. we're delivering it. So mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, people would order something. And then it would be what the regular order was. And they'd, we'd send it up to the master. And everybody would freak out. And we'd get yelled at. And then mm-hmm. they'd go back to another room and they'd order and it would look like it did in the master and we'd get yelled at again. Oh no. And uh, so there was things. Um, the, the, yeah, so we had, we had our share of people. Um, I think during parties, it's, it's really funny. I think that the people who were celebrities and acted accordingly, they were fine as long as anybody wasn't trying to come up mm-hmm. and take pictures with them. But there were some people that were on the fringe, like, they had a little bit of money or they were kind of a celebrity, like a C-lister, where when they're up at the mansion, they wanted to feel like they were hot shit. So they would be, um, they would be a nightmare to deal with. Ew, rude. Yeah. I remember one time I was sitting just during the day, I was in the med room with Kendra and this older gentleman walked in. He wasn't like a super, he was up there for like a buffet movie and he was up there early for some reason. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't like a super regular, but he walked in on his cane and he goes, looks straight at Kendra and he goes, Get me Mary O'Connor on the phone. Oh, yes. And she goes, what? And he goes, Mary O'Connor. Mm-hmm. And she, I need her on the phone. And she goes, call her yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I know exactly who you're talking about. You do? Yeah. His name was Hugh, too. Mm-hmm. How do you know? Does he do that to other people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forget what his last name was. He was some celebrity from back in the day, but he yeah. was something. I, I can't remember his last name either, but we knew him as the other Hugh. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was God. just someone who was like, call yourself. <laughs> yeah. He, he, was, he was something else. <laughs> oh, my God. There, so there were those, like, older, some of, you know, I mean, there was a lot of has-been, like, yeah. older actors there. Um, but, yeah, he was... He was probably the, the, the worst. Oh, no. There, there's a lot. You know, the funny thing is there's a lot of um, ones that you might think would be mean, but they mm-hmm. were actually really nice. Like one of the, one of my favorite, there are a, a couple. One of my favorite was um, that Nicholson, after a party, he would come up to a party on Saturday night. So he probably wasn't at many parties when you guys were there, but <laughs> yeah. Nicholson would come up to a party on Saturday night and then he would be invited back on Sunday for buffet and movie. And most of the time he would come up and he would come in through the door. He would go through the dining room where the guests were sitting and they were trying to say hi to him and he would ignore them. And he came back to the pantry and he would shake everybody's hand. Thank you for last night. Thank That's you for last so night. Sweet. He would go into the kitchen. Thank you for last night. Thank you for last night. And wow. people, because of his persona, because of, you know, how he is at Laker games, because of, you know, like what people what the public sees, mm-hmm. you wouldn't think that somebody would be that, you know, um, thankful and that generous. And yeah. he wanted to make sure he's like, I don't care if you were here or not. Thank you so much. And That's he would so shake sweet. everybody's hand. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, the boxer. Mm-hmm. Also, he knew that there were a lot of, um, Latinx, um, Hispanic, um, 
employees in the maintenance department, in the kitchen, you know, housekeeping and all of that. And one time he was at a party and somebody had heard he was going to be there and they brought boxing gloves. And so there's no reason for him to even come in the house during a party, like a big, like Midsummer's type party. Might have been Midsummer's. And uh, somebody asked, it wasn't Roman, but it was somebody else in the kitchen that had the boxing gloves. He came right back and signed those gloves. Oh, that's so nice. And yeah. said hi to everybody. So there's there's a lot of, the, you know, there, there have been plenty of people that have been difficult to deal with. Um, yeah. But there's also been people that have been surprisingly nice. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's a little, you know, you, some up, some down. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're heading out. Mm-hmm. What were things like after we left? After you left. Um... Well, after you left, it was the Shannon twins. Did you ever hear the cum in the milk story? No. <laughs> so I heard this, I think from you, Bridget, you I were know, going to jazz festival. jazz festival. Like you came back to go accompany a yeah, jazz festival. invited Nick and I actually to mm-hmm. go to jazz festival with him and Crystal and the Shannon twins. And I don't know if it was anybody else with us or not. And you arrived early and one of them, and Hef comes downstairs and one of them goes up to heaven and said, I just got served milk and there was cum in it. It tasted like cum. And I heard, didn't you say that somebody like got fired or got in trouble for it? I don't, because I don't remember the story. You were insisting. I don't know. I heard it. You guys, just disclaimer, this is clearly a third hand story. <laughs> but allegedly, yeah. one of them was drinking milk and said it tasted like cum and complained about it and the butlers got in trouble or something. Like part of it sounds familiar to me, but then I'm like, wait, how do I know what, what I can't grasp it quite? Yeah. Were there were there personalities that didn't like the girls uh, in the butler staff? Yes. Would something like that have ever happened? I would say no. And then, I was definitely not there for that. And then Stacy had a story because I guess Stacy, yeah. who we love, then then she got a milkshake and she swore that there was dog food ground up in the milkshake. <laughs> Did you ever hear that one? I heard that uh, again. Wasn't, well, you have wasn't, heard wasn't, it. wasn't wasn't there, and I I can't say if it was true or not because I wasn't there. None of us ever spit in anything. Oh, or thank God. Anything like that. No, no matter what. Yeah. At least not during my not during my time, you know, or my days there. Yeah. Um. There there were you know some that might have been mad enough to want to <laughs> do stuff like that, but yeah. none of them actually did. Not especially when I was a shift leader. Cause I wouldn't, that wouldn't fly with me. Yeah. I don't care how mad you are at someone yeah. like that's not going to happen. Crazy. Like you get unsanitary, you're out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I hope that's not true. Yeah. What I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know anything about, um, Stacy had this wild story too about one of the girls. I think it was between the girls, but somebody put like fish in their like vent or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I don't know how that, that could have weird. happened and the whole house wouldn't have smelled. Yeah, I, I know, but it was like just in this girl's room, they put something in the, like... Do you know what? I think... Oh, she said a butler did that? No, I think the, a girl did it. You know what? I think she has the story mixed up. So one of the girls who had one of the rooms at the time and would often have, like, girls who came home from the clubs would come, like, party in her room afterward. I went to her room once and there was, like, this paper taped to the ceiling that was hanging down from the vent... And I go, oh, what's that? And she goes, oh, I had to cover up the vents because she was smoking meth in here and it smells like rotten eggs, so I didn't want it to go down the vents. Oh, gross. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Chaotic. I mean, you can't smoke that stuff and then order food and have us not (laughs) smell it. Right? Ew. But. Um. Wait, there was another story I was going to ask about that. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you about because people bring this up all the time. All of the, that every room, every hallway had cameras and microphones. No, there was, um, I mean, there was some security cameras and stuff around, but not in every room. And as far as recording devices go, the only real one, um, in was out of it wasn't even used by the time I was there but there in the library in Hef's library there was a little button underneath the where the you know the little um bar area was like where you, the ice bucket where you can make a drink yeah yeah there was a little button underneath that we were told that Hef had and in the 1970s there would be politicians and stuff there so theoretically whether it happened or not I have no idea but you could hit record leave the room and then whatever they're talking about behind closed doors could get recorded. Wow. I never knew it that. was not 
serviceable mm-hmm. in the ones I, when I started anyway. So I have no idea if he recorded. Uh, I guess it, they had the ability to, mm-hmm. but that's the only place that had like a hidden Oh, wow. Microphone That's type crazy. of thing. Well, I try to tell people all the time, there's no way there was cameras everywhere because I would have seen them. Mm-hmm. And 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 if they were old ones, like before my time, they would still be there even if they weren't working because nobody changed things out. Like, yeah. like it just didn't get renovated. Mm-hmm. And who's monitoring all that alleged footage to right. see what's going on? Right. right. <laughs> the, only, the only people that were monitoring what cameras were working was security. Mm-hmm. And any time that you walked down to security, you could see the cameras yeah. that they had. That's all there was. There yeah. was no. There's no. No tunnels. No secret videos. <laughs> yeah, there right. is um, perimeter microphones. Yes. Supposedly though. Some maybe around, sure, but perimeter again. like around the property. Yeah. Because um, somebody who works security told me about that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, probably in places I didn't know exactly where they were, but there's just just around the perimeter, mm-hmm. um, and I don't know that they were even serviceable either yeah i don't know i think they were but um i don't know i like the extent of those um so we left yep and there's a turnaround yep tell us about like what life was like at the mansion between like when we left which would have been like er, late well two i left in january 2009 Mm -hmm. so from 2009 to like when you left in 2016? It was definitely different. Um, I think that, you know, I think the the staff was just tired of the, the twins when they were there and then there was Crystal. And uh, when Crystal was there, I think things just were calm. I think they were, you know, not saying that there wasn't without drama, but I think it was, um, you know, and this was when I was finish, finishing school and things like that, so I wasn't there as much. Mm-hmm. But it just, it, it was, it didn't, it didn't feel the same. Yeah. Um, and then when, you know, when, when Crystal was there, it was just, it was almost kind of like coming back full circle a little bit to like what it was with Kim. Mm-hmm. A little bit, because Crystal had that, you know, kind of like... I'm in charge a little, not, not like, not the same way Kim did, mm-hmm. but like, it was just, it was just a different vibe, different dynamic. Yeah. Um, and then Hef was getting even older. Yeah. So, um, not as many parties, uh, the, the staff was pared down. We used to have graveyard, you know, so we'd have a butler 24 hours. Now at that point, um, the latest shift was 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. And there was no butler from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. until JD or whoever got there oh, wow, in the morning. So, um, because Hef would never be up at that time. Mm-hmm. And so if anybody wanted anything, they'd have to go straight to Ramon in the kitchen. Um, so it was a lot quieter, less parties. Mm-hmm. And just, I don't know, it just didn't. Did you notice when, like, the guest list started to get cut for, mm-hmm. like, buffet and movie and stuff? Yeah. Yep. That was, again, during the crystal time. Because there was still, it was still kind of up there during the the twins um i worked mostly sundays mm-hmm. just the sunday up buffet and i would i would um fill in on the other days sometimes and um when it got cut like it was pretty it was a few people at first mm-hmm. and then it was kind of dr- dramatic where it would be a lot less so we would go down to like you know a handful of people on fridays and saturdays and mm-hmm. they would still have some on sundays but like probably no more than like what a normal Friday would have. Wow. Because remember, really like we, yeah, like during the summers, we'd have like a hundred people on a Sunday mm-hmm. sometimes. Wow. And then like it was down to like 40, probably. Um, so it was definitely, it was definitely different. Um, were you aware that they were making guests sign NDAs at the end? I was not aware that they were oh. making guests sign NDAs at the end because I was only there like once, twice a oh, week. Oh, yeah. Um, but totally understandable. And, um, and then I just, you know, I knew like they were, then they started paring down the, the, the staff as well. Mm-hmm. And so finally in 2016, after that, they're like, okay, we're not really doing many parties anymore. So we're just going to keep the staff that's there. And I was like, well, that's the end of Nara. But yeah. I was, you know, I, I didn't have, I had feelings about it cause I'd been there. I started at 18. I finished, I was 36 when I worked my last party. Yeah. So I was there literally half my life Wow. at the time. It's. Yeah crazy to think yeah, that. Yeah, you know? it is. 
So, um, and a big part of your life, like the 18 to 36 yeah. is a, is a huge monumental chunk of your life. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were, you know, they were guests that still, that I still talk to sometimes that were like, we literally saw you grow up. Yeah. Cause Aww. I went from, you know, as, as uncle Joe would affectionately call me college puke. College um, puke. <laughs> I went from, I went from 18 year old college puke to, you know, they were calling me doctor. Yeah. At the mm-hmm. end. Dr. Bryant married Dr. with Bryant. kids. Yeah. Amazing. Well, one kid, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Married with kid. With kid. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, it was very interesting, you know, um, being a psychology major and going through all the classes, first the general ones, and then when I got into my master's and PhD program, it was like very specific types of classes. And you could see a lot of these, you know, things from abnormal psych and things like that going on. When I was going to ask you about that. Did you, you ever, like, about, yeah. When you talk about disorders and mm-hmm. depression and, and and we could see that those things you know as I'm going through and taking class and again I never you know I'm not a clinician I right. was always research oriented and teaching um, but it was definitely something that like I could have conversations with my professors about yeah you know, and things like that it was definitely an interesting dynamic and it was really cool because a lot of people don't know that Hef actually his degree was in psychology yeah, and I feel like he's fascinating even from a psychology perspective. Like so many people, everybody there kind of, because everyone's there for a reason and motivations. And I mean, it's just really, I, I feel like everybody there is fascinating in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you could treat the whole thing as a giant social experiment. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Right? So, I um, could so have that, a thesis on that. I, yeah. I could have, yeah. I, I didn't, but <laughs> definitely, definitely could have been an option. Um, there was a, um, which was not a psychology class. When I was at Santa Monica College, I actually had a speech class. Oh, no, sorry. No, I took, it was a psychology class. I took human sexuality. And one of, uh, this was like early on when I was working there, I was 98. And I remember that um, as a final project, I was able to give out a service. So I was asking like people's opinion on sexuality and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I did a handful of like 12 people that I gave playmates and and people that worked there, like, you know, staff and things like that. I gave them the survey and then I gave it to, compared it to people who had never been to the mansion and just Mm -hmm. like their sexuality, like their thoughts on it and things like that. And then it was one of those things where the, the professor said, you can either do a survey or write a paper or you can do a presentation. And so I was like, I want to report my results. And uh, Julie McCullough at the time was like, hey, would your, would your human sexuality class be interested in having a former playmate come up and do like a Q&A? So I did the survey. I did. And then I reported the results of the survey in a presentation. And then Julie came in and she answered That's the an questions. A. And oh, I, got I, the high, I got the highest grade in the class. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That's, That's so cool. So that was probably the only... And then uh, the speech class I was talking about was they had us to explain a process. And Julie and I used to go swing dancing. So when I had to explain the process of swing dancing, Julie came in as my partner. Oh, that's she was great. like, I have fun with this. So yeah. it was kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel like the transition was really weird because we, um, we'd been there for so long and I felt like it was, um, very much a family. Like I was sad to leave and I kind of left a little bit prematurely. I mean, I wanted, I was ready to go based on some things that were happening at the mansion, but in my head I had thought that I would stay a little bit longer Mm -hmm. and, um, I heard from so many people, from guests, from staff that, they felt sad too that we were gone. Like it was kind of like it was things were so different. It after was very, that. it was very different. And I just never, I never really know. Like, do people just say that to make us feel better? Like it was really amazing when you guys were there. Like I felt <laughs> like we all had so much fun and we were filming and like it was just like a really good. I mean, arguably, of course, but I just felt like it was a really good time period. And um, and then I just I felt like. There was a real sense of loss after it was over, and I felt that from other guests mm-hmm. and and staff that would share it with me. And then, I, but I always tell myself, well, maybe they're just saying that to me because. Well, I think you know it's the, they had the show go, must go on mentality, mm-hmm. um, but it definitely was. It, there's definitely a different vibe, you yeah. Know? But I mean, we can also say that you know when it went from Kim to girlfriends, and when it went from three to seven, and when it went to girls next door, and they were filming. Yeah, they were. You can always say that that changed. Of course, the vibe. So, yeah. you know, in general, of course, it's going to be different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like I said, it was going back. You know, then 
you had the twins and then you had Crystal and it just, it was definitely different and it was starting to pare down with everything. And I'm not just talking about cutting guests and cutting butlers, but it's just like cutting activities and his activity. And so it was just everything, you know, ramped up again in the 2000s, like it was for them in like the 70s and 80s, -hmm. you know, where it wasn't in the 90s. And then here we were all up on this, you know, going up, up, up. Now they're all in the media and everything, and um, and then all of a sudden it's declining. It's, yeah, it's just all declining. It's just all getting quiet. Do you think that this was Hef's choice? Do I think it was Hef's choice? I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know if you know because he liked entertaining. He liked the spotlight. Mm-hmm. I think he liked the lifestyle. Yeah. Did they ever install um, an elevator when you were there for Hef? They installed, it was like a chairlift thing. Oh. Um, On the so, stairs? Uh-huh. Oh. Um, so they did install that. Oh, okay. Was um, there, there was an elevator started though, right? Yes. Yes. And I, they may have completed it after I left, but I wasn't really there. No, nobody um, has told me this, that they've seen it completed. Right. So I know <laughs> that there, I know that there were, there were plans for it, for it. Um, and I remember the the chair that went up up and down the stairs because I, that that was sort of my end um, over there um, because he had back issues mm-hmm. before anything else, so um, it was hard to get up and down the stairs. Yeah, which we had feared for years. Mm-hmm. That, you know, we t- I'd been there so so many so many times where he would kind of stumble a step and I'd be like, oh crap! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully. Yeah. That never happened not <laughs> during my tenure there. So. Yeah. When did you start noticing Hef's health take a turn? Probably around the time that you guys left. Probably around the time of the, the twins and Crystal. Really? I felt like I could see it. Like when we saw it. Remember when we were all at the Palms for his birthday in 2009? I felt like he looked so I was so there too, good. by the way. You <laughs> were? I th- my favorite, my, there. Well, my, fa- my favorite band was Dave Matthews Band, and they had happened to have a concert at the same time as his birthday in 09. And so was Jen Pershing there, too? Pershing was there, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I noticed a real change in everything at the mansion when Mary died. True. A definite, yeah. like, switch. Well, she, she kept that place running. I know. Yeah, she pulled the strings. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, I remember when... I remember when I used to go out with you guys and do the photos um, when you went out on Wednesday nights because Elaine, who was there forever, she didn't want to do it anymore. She's mm-hmm. like, can you please do it? You're just at UCLA. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'll go out. I'll take pictures when we went to catch up in STK and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so it was like, you know, she was going mary was gone so yeah there was it was a whole changing of the guard as well right that um nobody could run the ship like mary yeah yeah mary really looked out for him yeah i tried to go visit mary in the hospital and i was blocked oh really yeah Hmm. i had no idea not interesting ashley and i both were blocked from going to visit her and I did get invited to her funeral, but that's only because Mark Rossler was in charge of the funeral. Mm-hmm. So I he made that. sure that I was invited. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been. Yeah. I was invited to the funeral as well, but I didn't generally go to those things because I didn't want other staff members, especially other butlers, to um, get upset if I was invited to something and they weren't. So I tended to stay away from stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Like the first time that Hef met my son, I had been working, I worked one of those 2 a.m. shifts the night before and um, I had my car on property so we always had to take the keys and the and the um, notebook for who called when we had to take messages mm-hmm. for Hef um, and I would take them to security. So it was 2 a.m., I had a six month old kid and I was tired and so I dropped the keys off at security, left the, um, I left the notebook, the message book in my car. And the next day my wife was at work and I had to, uh, I had to bring back the message book, but I'm not leaving a six month old kid in my car. So I just parked like illegally parked right outside the back gate. And I'm like telling security, I'm like, Hey, I'm not, I'm just returning the book, but I got to take the kid with me because I can't leave him unattended. And I walked in and it was, um, this was 2012. So, um, it was, they were doing a pumpkin carving night. 
And I had no idea, right? I didn't even think about that. But I walked in and I was just going to, literally just gonna drop the message book and then leave. But of course, people wanted to see my kid and stuff yeah. like that. And like, and then Elaine came in and Elaine and I have always been really, really close. Like she's like a mom to me. And so she saw Carter and she was just freaking out. Cause she's like, oh, it's Carter, he's here. And then she goes to me and she goes, has half met Carter yet? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. No, he hasn't. I haven't been presenting my kid like the Lion King. Yeah. Right? And she goes, hold on a second. And, I'm, and this is where I'm like, I don't want anybody to think I get special privileges because I was just there literally to drop off something I forgot the night before. And so we walk in and she, she takes me into the dining room where all the girls are carving pumpkins and there's Hef and he sees Carter and he's like, oh, look, a baby. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to meet him. And so there's like a picture of, of Hef and I and my son is like, eyes wide yeah. like not knowing what's going on um and you know I, I felt really awkward because again I'm like I'm not asking for these things like yes I'm nice to people yes sometimes I get invited to things because we are a family but I don't ever want anybody to think that I get special privileges or that they're excluded mm -hmm. so it was really awkward yeah but yeah um I tried to come up and see Hef uh, for like two years. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get a hold of somebody and they wouldn't let me up. Mm -hmm. And um, I was writing a book at that time and I wanted to talk to Hef about it and like just get his blessing on it, like not just do it. Mm -hmm. And they would not let me up. Um, but then Cooper invited me to the midsummer party that he was doing yeah. in 2016. Yep. And Nick and I went to that. and. Um, then uh, Cooper said he could get me, he could sneak me in on a Sunday, but I was out of town. Oh. So I couldn't do it. Yeah. And then that was it. less than a year later, he died. Or, well, no, a little over a year later, he died. Yeah. That was my one chance to like go and see him, but I wasn't, I wasn't in town. Um, let's see. We talked about the NDAs. And then, so in the end, when you left, it's because they were paring down. Yeah. So I was no longer working. I had been working Sundays, and then eventually they were like, well, only the current staff that's there. They didn't need extra people because they were paring down. Yeah. So they didn't need as many butlers on the weekends because the, the size of the crowds were really small. Yeah. And so um, that's when, after Midsummers, they were, they were telling me, they're like, well, we're paring down again so I don't think there's going to be any need for you to come work parties anymore and I said that sounds about right okay well it's been a good run yeah did you get invited to have funeral uh, I did get invited to have funeral but again I did not want to make an appearance because I didn't want anybody to think and even though you know because he was obviously special to me but um, I did not um, want to make a scene I never want anybody to think that I had privileges, so I paid my respects outside of that. And, uh, and it wasn't the actual funeral; it was like that after afterwards, like the reception thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was invited to. But yeah. Um. Oh yeah, I lost it. Um. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, the funeral. What did it have been? I'm like, where do we go from there? It's a funeral. Yeah, like, yeah. How do we... But there was one more thing. Um, have you seen the mansion since? I saw the mansion. I mean, I've seen pictures and things like that. Um, there's like a, there's like a Playboy Facebook page, and there's people that like um, that that have shown pictures since then. Because we, I remember, I was around when the next door neighbor bought it and had the agreement that you know everything could be kept the same until yeah. that fateful day. Um, but that, because it was a landmark and because um, of the history, you know, obviously the guy wanted to make it into like a Graceland, but the uh, Homey Hills didn't have, didn't allow for it. The, the neighbors said no, so they didn't have the zoning rights. Yeah. And so he said, no, but we'll, I'll keep it mostly the same. And I remember the, the last time I was there, he had torn down the aviary, mm -hmm. just the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Everything else was still pretty much the same. And I was like, it still feels weird for for a yeah. couple of year, for a couple of years that was going on. And then there was, and then the pictures I see now, and I'm just like, this is horrible. Yeah. 
Yeah. The aviary was cool. I don't know I why somebody would cool want too. that. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. I felt like the secret area. Yeah, it was I cool. I loved mm-hmm. it. Oh, I know what my question was that I lost. Okay. Uh, the Playboy reunions. Yes. Do you go to those? I do. I do go to those. How are those? Um, I do it. I've invited you guys. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I'd be a welcome guest on no, this. But invited, I think, but I no, gone. I think the uh, like early on. Oh yeah, I, I told you mm-hmm. about it, um, and uh, it is it is. I'm here to say this is not my thing. I, I'm not the one that plans it, um, but it is. Uh, it's it's really nice. It's just a um, get together at the park by the mansion, um, and people bring drinks and barbecue stuff, and um, it's just. You know, it, it's it's interesting because you know, again, a lot of the guests didn't interact with a lot of the staff, mm-hmm. and it's more staff because it's staff run. It's more staff than guests, but um, it's kind of nice. It's that we get together and we honor our time there, and the fact that when we say that we're a family, it's really a family thing. So I'll I. Saw that's where I saw Alan last, mm-hmm. and um, things like that. And so it's like you see people that you haven't seen in a while. Um, John Collado had never shown up before, but he was there with his wife this time. And oh, wow. you know, we had so much history together, it was just so nice to see him. Yeah, that's um, fun. so yeah, so playmates come sometimes, guests come, and it's just kind of nice. Yeah, I don't stay very long because I usually have some sort of sport that my son is in or yeah. something else that I have to do, but it is, it's really nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. That was all my questions. Is there anything we're forgetting to ask you or something you're like, oh, they didn't ask that. Too bad they didn't <laughs> get that story because that would have been a, a zinger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, well, I, I mean, the only other story, sometimes people ask me, um, like, who, uh, most, most of the time I get a question of, like, who's my favorite celebrity that I've ever met or something like that, or is there any cool story? And I will say that... Um, there was a party where Quentin Tarantino came, mm-hmm. and he was one of the first guests there because the parties would start at eight, but nobody would be mm-hmm. there at eight. And obviously, you <laughs> you ladies wouldn't yeah. be ready until way later. Yeah, um, well, so, we had to watch the movie, and right. we couldn't even come down. Then we had to go get ready. <laughs> but um, so so you know, we would get a few guests trickle in at eight, but not much. So we didn't have a lot to do once we set up and. Tarantino happened to come. This was early 2000s. Maybe it was 2000 itself. And Tarantino um, asked for a tour. And he's like, can you can you show me around? And I made sure it was cool with the boss. and Not the boss, but mm-hmm. like Brian. Okay. And so I, I showed him around. And in the... Um, I took him into the uh, game house and into the van room. And then he just sat down on the carpet in the van room. And he's like, hey... Let me ask about you. And Tarantino was my favorite director at the mm-hmm. time, and it still pretty much is. But um, he, I was, I was like, I have so many questions that I could ask you. But he's like, don't worry about me. He's like, I want to know about you as a butler. And this was the first time. This was before the show, before anything other than my friends asking me what's it like to work there. Yeah. He was like, he and he painted this mental picture that I didn't even think about. He was like, here you are, a run of the mill college student. And all of a sudden, you know, you have a shift and then you, they open the gates of Shangri-La and you're in this, like, you know, you're in this paradise. You're in the happiest place on earth that's not (laughs) Disneyland. And, you know, like, what is it like? And he wanted to know, like, literally, like, how I felt, like, walking through the gates and then being Bryant the butler as opposed to Bryant the college student. um, Because it's, like, surreal. And this, again, before the public got a chance to see behind the, 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 the curtain. Yeah. So it was, that was probably my favorite conversation because we talked for maybe f- half an hour, 40 minutes. Wow. And he just wanted to know what it was like to be in my position. Because he's like, all these people would pay thousands of dollars to go to these parties. And not only do you get to be there, I know you don't get to partake, but you get paid to be there. Yeah. And it's like, that didn't really occur to me until yeah. he had mentioned it. And so that was one of probably the coolest moments that I can say I had there. Yeah. That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much. Well, this has been amazing. I don't know how long we've been recording for. <laughs> Two and a half hours. <gasps> Whoops. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, we love it. No, we love, love it. Yeah. They, oh, my God. They're going to love it. Thank you so much for doing this. And it's, like, so awesome to reconnect. It's and, fun. It yeah. Was, it was yeah. Fun. Reminisce. Sure. And, Thank you for coming. Of course. Mm-hmm.
Thanks for having me. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for more content, you can find us on our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.